Hey, welcome back once again. And today we are talking about long term capital management. So let's see what this case study was all about. This is another case study from loading from financial disasters under the book foundations of risk management. So let's start. Now to give you a background about LTCM, LTCM was known as so LTCM or long term capital management was a hedge fund and it was founded in the year 1994 by this trader named John Merriweather. He was a successful trader during his time and and LTCM was also backed by former Fed vice chairman and also at the same time there were Nobel Prize winners like Robert Merton and Myron Scholes. So you know the Black Scholes and Merton model. So they are the same people behind the very famous BSM model. Okay, so it had a great reputation in the market such a strong leadership in LTCM okay and just to let you know during the very first few years of LTCM they owned huge amount of uh, returns for the investors okay so it was very successful in the initial phases now the strategy of LTCM was to make convergence trading also known as relative value trading which is also known as market neutral trading okay so the trading strategy of the fund was to make arbitrage trades okay which involves basically uh, buying one asset and selling another asset in an attempt to capture the mispricings okay so buying one and selling another so that they can make a pro profit out of these two different trades okay and i'm going to explain that so let's take a very hypothetical example of a relative value trading now the firm actually made their trades on the assumption that the spread between the uh, sovereign bonds and the corporate bonds in various countries they were too wide and they would revert back to normal level which is the average level here okay so, so imagine this black line is the normal or the average level and L ltcm thought that the spreads between two uh, between the sovereign and the corporate bonds were wide and they would eventually they would come back to this normal level okay so that's what they thought and to give you a very specific example let's take uh, so they bought uk corporate bonds okay and they sold that is they were short uk government bonds okay so this is an example that we are taking so that we understand now what ltcm assumed is that the spreads between these two different types of bonds were too wide and eventually it will revert to their normal level and if it comes here if if, if it uh, converges to this normal level they would make huge amount of money so this is one of their trades that what they do they also felt same uh, between different sovereign and corporate bonds in various countries okay so this was the the base of uh, of relative value trading the base of uh, convergence trading okay so that's what they thought now to add to this let's take a very simple hypothetical example of a balance sheet these mispricing in the market was very small so to make huge returns ltcm took high leverage okay so just to give you an idea the the leverage was 25 is to 1 that means if you are aware assets is equal to liabilities plus equity okay so if the assets are 25 and equity is one then your liabilities are 24 okay because at the end of the day this this balance sheet has to tally having such a huge liability that also gave them an advantage to to make more trades like this and to put more money so that they can uh, capture the mispricing and they can make huge amount of money and at the same time one more thing that also helped them to take huge trades was the initial margin now initial margin is the money that you need to deposit before you make a trade okay so this is kind of like a deposit money so that anything happens uh, it's like a buffer money that you keep aside so that anything happens in the trade then this is the money that can be utilized utilized first many of the counterparties they did not ask for initial margin because you have such a great leadership behind ltcm that it had really great reputation at that point in time so many counterparties they waved off the initial margins and that free capital that ltcm had that also 
allowed them to take more and more trades like this so though so if you look at the overall leverage the balance sheet leverage was 24 as as per the leverage ratio but economic leverage okay that was huge because they had so many trades with uh, with no initial margins you had free capital you can take on more and more trades that overall economic leverage was very high to give you an example the notional value of uh, uh, ltcm trades was up to one trillion dollars so you can imagine the kind of trades that LTCM was used to do. Now the LTCM's downfall was triggered in the August of 1998 when the government of Russia they declared a moratorium on its debt and they devalued their currency. Now this event actually led to a phenomenon of flight to quality. Now flight to quality is something that in, in times of crisis, the investors would take their money out from risky assets, okay, like corporate bonds, and they would invest in a safe asset like the US government securities, okay? So this event in Russia actually actually created flight to quality in, in investors, and they took their money out from risky assets. So now, so LTCM was actually assuming that the corporate bonds yield would come down and revert to normal level and the UK government bonds would come up and revert to their normal leverage. So this was the trade of LTCM based on their models. But with this flight to quality, corporate bonds yield, instead of falling down, it actually went up and the government bond yield instead of going up it fell so now the spreads are widened okay instead of narrowing it down now this actually created huge amount of losses for the ltcm and imagine the kind of leverage that they've put on to these trades so the losses were huge and this is just one of the trades that they did on relative value trading. They had many other trades and you can imagine the kind of losses based on their trades. And because of these strategies, the value of LTCM assets fell down by over 40%. So if they had equity of $4.8 billion, they now had equity of only $2 billion. So imagine that's the kind of money that they lost in just one month now the fall of ltcm was so huge that it could nearly uh, it can cause a systematic crash okay and now the losses of ltcm was so huge that it actually spilled over into broader financial markets in the us and it nearly it caused a systematic crash okay so you can imagine the intensity and and the money that was involved uh, overall now to prevent further losses a group of banks they injected 3.5 billion dollars in equity okay so that the the risk of ltcm falling down and causing a market downturn in order to prevent that they put this money now there's one thing that i would want you to note is that uh, the banks who actually took over the ltcm they made a lot of money with with the same trades when things were fine okay so their trades based on the models was not so wrong but the timing of of this event was not right for ltcm and that caused their downfall but the banks who actually took over ltcm they made huge money based on these trades so that's the irony of this case okay now let's see what lessons can be learned from the failure of ltcm so the very first thing is that ltcm was relying very heavily on value at risk model okay so they were using this to make their trades and so on this is a hypothetical distribution that we have and their estimated loss for 10 days was 320 million dollars so this is the maximum loss that they would face in a 10 day period this was their calculated var but in reality they suffered a loss of more than 1 billion dollars which is very extreme in the tail so you can imagine that was as close to eight standard deviations away 
from our original mean. So you can imagine such an extreme event that their model did not predict, which is value at risk. So that is why a, a very major lesson that can be learned and, and that, that was actually recommended at that point in time was stress testing. Stress testing was recommended to use in their risk management process because of the failure of VAR model. And we also know the limitations of VAR. Generally in the FRM curriculum, we have seen that uh, we don't know. VAR tells you the maximum loss that you can face over a given period of time, but it doesn't tell you accurately how much that loss would be. So LTCM is a perfect example of failure of VAR model. And that is why we also use expected shortfall to supplement the VAR calculations. Now talking about correlation, the LTCM, they did not properly anticipate the correlations in the event of a crisis. So LTCM thought that the trading positions were correlated according to their models, but it didn't turn out to be as expected. And we know that the trades went against them and this increased in correlations, the widening of the spread that led them to huge margin calls and eventually led to huge losses. Now talking about volatility, LTCM's historical volatility pattern was also broken down during that time and they experienced daily volatility of more than $100 million. Now this is the amount that they did not expect, which is more than double the amount that they expected. All right, talking about liquidity and initial margin posting. This is another great thing that can be learned from LTCM failure. The very first thing, let, let's talk about liquidity. Now, whenever we are talking about liquidity, understand that whenever companies face any kind of risk, the only thing that they need at that point in time uh, is cash flow. Okay, so liquidity is of two types. The very first one is funding liquidity risk and the second one is trading liquidity risk. Risk. Funding liquidity is something that you need money so that you can survive or you can meet those margin calls. Okay. In the case of LTCM, the banks injected $3.5 billion in exchange for 90% of the equity. So fortunately, they got the funds that they needed to survive at that point in time. And as I explained in the previous slide, the banks who actually took over in LTCM, they made a substantial amount of money when things went fine. Now, trading liquidity is something that whatever derivative positions that you are in, you need to wind that up quickly so that you can control or limit your losses. They also faced trading liquidity risk in the form of unwinding their derivatives positions. The second thing that we need to learn and that is no initial margin money was demanded by LTCM counterparties. Now, most of the lenders, they did not ask for initial margin money from the LTCM and this actually helped the LTCM to take more economic leverage. As I explained in the previous slide, we have a balance sheet leverage that, that can be seen, okay? But economic leverage is due to the fact that you take on more and more derivative contracts and your overall exposure in the market increases. So, And this economic leverage was something that was fueled with the help of no initial margin money okay so this is very important and something that that's a great lesson that can be learned from ltcm 